it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. And we're zooming in and focusing in on a very important topic, and that is really understanding the controlling covert narcissist, the manipulative covert narcissist who tries to really get into the subconscious inner workings of the mind of those people who are around them. And essentially, yes, like the viewer question asked, will they do things manipulative you manipulatively to keep others down and to keep others from becoming their best self, to keep others really essentially unhappy or unfulfilled and really controlling them through the feeling of guilt. They are then making decisions for them. Um, the decisions of, no, we can't have this. No, you can't do this. No, you can't become this. No, we can't go there. In other words, they're always chopping off the path and you know cutting the corner. No, we can't build out there. No, we can't expand. No, we can't grow. This is really the law of poverty or the poverty consciousness of the controlling covert narcissist who wants to create or instill self-limiting beliefs in others so that they can't really begin to experience a fuller sense of life. Why would they do this? Why would they control through a sense of poverty or poverty consciousness or lack? Why would they want people to have less than what they need, less than what they deserve, less than what they're entitled to, or less than their dreams? Why would they want people to be or feel less than? What does that sound like? Does it sound like narcissism? Those who operate with a sense of superiority, especially in a covert context, where it's more of a physical emanating of energy, it's not so much what they say, it's not what they don't say, it's not so much what they do, it's what they don't do. It's the covert secretive nature where they're not really accountable, they're not really responsible, they're not really communicating, they're not really doing much of anything, but yet they're doing it all or there's the all that's missing from the picture, so it's like you're looking at, at a gestalt. If you understand gestalt therapy, it's like the mind tends to try to fill in what is missing, and so oftentimes you feel like you're having to always pick up what is missing or living in a state of deficit. And now if we look at the Kabbalion, which is part of the ancient sacred texts, we look at really what, in a lot of philosophy, they talk about truth or untruth. And they talk about truth or folly. And the Kabbalion talks about the wise and following the wise versus the half wise. And the half wise, one of the fundamental tenets of, of the Kabbalion is that of mentalism. Everything is mental. In other words, everything begins within your sort of dream consciousness or your creative consciousness and bringing and manifesting the highest experience of life that you want in making this happen, i.e., you know, if I can think it, I can do it. What is that? You know, there's a lot of wonderful songs, um, you know, think it and you can be it. It's just the concept of mentalism in that full right. It's a, once you enter into the mentalism state, you realize that the, the mind has the ability to conceive and achieve. And oftentimes that state is arrived at a state of truth, at a state of truth where you kind of know what to say no to. You are able to say no to the half wise. You're able to say no to the lies. You're able to say, no, I'm not just following. No, I am different. And that it's okay to be different. And actually that's the truth of the wise and the really the Holy Spirit or the energy that's gonna bring you happiness. Whether Whatever you wanna name it, we can all put a name on it, but it is that which is sort of what is and what is infinite, yet we can't really describe it, but we try to. That's the whole argument of a lot of psychology. But when we look at the the covert narcissist and how really they are living in a half-wise state, in other words, they're living on the illusion. They're not living fully, truly expressed. They are operating at a sort of dismal or repressed state and keeping themselves there, and furthermore, keeping others down as part of their control, controlling philosophy. In other words, if they can control others, they feel a very sort of 
Well, at least I'm protecting myself. I'm getting my other's needs. And you can only stray so far. You can only think so high. You can only dream so big. But you are going to only dream really this own little small, little, you know, little bit of, of energy space, if you will. Um, that's very sort of caged and contained and repressed and suppressed and sort of compressed. And you're feeling like you can't really spread your wings and fly. You can't live the lifestyle that you want. You can't be yourself and live the way freely that you want. You're feeling like it's like you're gasping for money or gasping for energy or gasping for love. You can't really live that fully embodied state because there's always going to be that drop off. The guilt that is really like the cliff dwelling, you know, ah, we can barely make it. It's that poverty consciousness. We can't make it. It's that fear. And really the absence of fear is what love is. So you need to dispel the fear and say, you know what? That fear, which has been um, part of the controlling aspect of the covert narcissist, to make me feel like I'm not worthy. We don't have the money. We don't have the time. Um, you, you know, people like you, we can't do that. The answer is no. We can't turn up the heat. We can't turn on the hot water. <clears throat> Whatever knows you've heard from that that covert narcissist, no, you can't go to school. Um, no, you can't go go to college. Um, no, you can't have that computer. No, you can't have that that beautiful clothing. No, you can't have that jacket. No, you can't have those shoes. No, we can't order that for dinner. No, we're not staying at that hotel. It's the instilling of the poverty consciousness or we cannot do it that oftentimes creates a decision-making faculty within those people who have been around them to follow that fear and to live in fear. And then all their decisions are looping back, even though that person might be gone for days, weeks, months, or years, or decades, or be passed on to the next dimension, they're still living in that poverty consciousness. They're still keeping that, that poverty alive. Isn't it time then to follow the full wise and realize that the earth will provide you what you're looking for. The earth will provide, and it always is not at a cost. Look at the videos we're presenting here, the tools that we're discussing. And to know, also to know that life will, that you're never alone. Life will introduce you to people that you need to meet. They will catch your eye, something colorful that they're wearing, the, the freedom with which they're dancing, um, maybe a child that you might see, you know, a couple of children playing, a toddler out and about. You'll see that that dream that that I can do anything, you know, that energy space that is really the the starting point of prosperity in making things happen and providing the solution because it's really that inner gift which is, is is meant to flourish and which is abundant and can manifest things like money, relationships, opportunities, but it's breaking the routine or the cycle or the control that the covert narcissist had instilled, that guilt, that no you know, and then you're freezing cold, you know, you're, you can't go, you can't meet anybody, you can't do anything. That whole truncated, limiting self-belief, which is instilled, um, which is, you know, it's, you have to flip that and realize there's a creative force that you need to latch hold of, like, you know, lassoing the moon, where you're just following your dream and realizing that, you know, when the sun sets, the stars really begin to shine brightly. In that that sort of dark controlled feeling can be dispelled by really the following of your heart. And like the Gabalian says, you know, um, the higher against the lower and the art of alchemy transmute that which is undesirable into that which is worthy. And thus triumph following the authority, let us avoid the half wisdom, which is folly, which ignores the truth that mastery consists not in abnormal dreams and visions, and fantastic imaginings are living, but using the higher forces against the lower. Escaping the pains of the lower, the lower planes by vibrating on the higher. In other words, it's not letting it get to you. It's saying, yes, we are going to find a way. We can make it happen. It's the scrappy players. It's the Michael Jordan who goes for all the shots. It's it's the Michelangelo who will keep at something for hours on end to create a beautiful masterpiece. Where have you dropped the ball? Where have you said, I can't do it? Where have you procrastinated? Where have you said, I can't make it? Where have you said, no, 
How can you flip it around to a yes, I got this now. You know, I can turn on the heat. I can go for that job. I can go for that fitness. I can go for that relationship. Yes, I can. And even though the vibration feel of, of affirmative, the yes, I am might be scary or you're wondering if it's sustainable, but yet it is that transmutation. It is that agreement that mentally I am accepting responsibility and accountability for the positive and I allow it to come by beckoning it forth. It's really kind of attracting it to you. And then it's in that gratitude for everything that exists, then that you are in prosperity consciousness and you're drawing that which can help you transmute and accept it and it's not to be controlled by the lower nature. That is what you know, that is the law of the universe is not to be controlled by that higher nature to say, yes, I'm holding on to that higher law. I'm high. I'm holding on to that higher consciousness, which guides me in love and is upright and ethical and kind and, and produces and is creative and allows it like, like the paintbrush of, of the great artists. I mean, just go to a local museum in your area and look at some of the wonderful uh, works of art and how, you know, that, that artist had just allowed the brush to just take his hand, you know. Um, it's allowing that creative force. So like when you cook your wonderful gourmet meal, you know, um, for example, when I cook, I, I cook very spontaneously in some like miraculous dishes. I'm like, wow, this is, is like amazing. And it's just a state of knowing, a state of creativity, a state of positivity, which no, you know, it's like a, it's like a fire that is just, you know, its own little hot little thing. It's just positivity. It's coming, it's generating. It's coming from your solar plexus, your heart. It's not coming from analysis. No, I can't. I have to dissect this. I have to analyze that. Analysis is paralysis. And when you're controlled by that poverty consciousness, controlled by the covert narcissist, you're allowing that lower nature to take hold of you. So the answer then is to vibrate on the higher nature, which is the yes, I can, yes, I am, and yes, I am now. And it's that, that radical action, which is living in the solution, which is becoming not afraid. It's those people who you see who have no stage fright. They have no, pre, you know, they have no presentation fright. They are working for a solution. It's those people who have stand, you know, stood up and not just sitting there watching television, but are standing up and making a difference. They're saving the planet. They're saving the water. They're saving the villages. They're saving the rainforest. Um, they're going out there and saving, you know, those people who have been victimized by human traffickers. Um, those people who are enslaving children in other countries, in other continents, you know, who are cutting down cocoa for chocolate bars. I mean, research and find out where you can go and make a difference and live it. L-I-V-E it. Not backwards, which is evil. Live it. Put it the other direction. Alchemize it. You need to take action and you need to, you know, take it in stride. You need to keep those feet moving. You need to keep the heels up. You need to keep the chin up. You need to keep decisive and working in your recovery journal and putting these things in. I mean, you've got six weeks, four weeks, one week, what are you going to do? You have to schedule it in. And if you feel like, you know, I have always, whoops, sorry. If you've, oh, I'm getting excited here. If you've always wanted to do something, the time is now to go and do it. And so that's why I encourage you to take action, make decisions, be your own boss, control your own destiny, control your own fate, go for the gusto and go for what alchemizes that lower nature to the higher nature and you will find amazing results. Mwah. Your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. You know it. Be controlled by the higher, not the lower.